good evening. Again, thank you everybody coming out. This is Thursday, October 27th. Uh, meeting starting a little after 7. A quorum being present. The meeting will be called to order. Return of the warrant shows it's properly been served. Uh, where are we on the voter count right now back there? 113. Okay, so we definitely have a quorum. Um, I would ask you at this time to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our nation's flag. Thank you very much. Yes, somebody called my name. Okay. Could you check and see if you have your number? Somebody dropped it. We found the owner. Excellent. At this point, I'd like to introduce the people that are sitting up here. For the select board, we have Chairman Jane Nevin Smith, Randy Iser. Molly Keegan, Joyce Chungalo, and Amy Parsons. For town council, we have Lisa Mead, I'm gonna to try to pronounce this right, of Mead, Tollerman, Ty, right, got it right, Tollerman and Costa. And of course, those that have been in town know our town clerk, Jessica Spanknable. Then the finance committee, Amy Fiden, chair, David Phil, Andrew Kopaki, Paul Benjamin, and Dylan Manns. Town Administrator, Carolyn Brennan, and for better or worse, I'm your moderator, Kirk Watley. I would like to remind you also that the Russell Street School Survey is in the back out there. There's a paper copy. They would really appreciate it if you take a couple of minutes, you know, either during the meeting or after, to fill that out. The survey is also available at the Senior Center and Town Hall. So if you have some input to the Russell School, uh, I know they would sincerely appreciate that. Now comes the boring stuff. Rules of the meeting. The meeting will be conducted as usual by town meeting time. If you wish to speak, I ask that you approach the microphone closest to you and wait to be recognized. State your name and your residential address each time that you choose to speak. Keep all comments to the article or motion at hand. Address all comments to the moderator and refer to any previous speaker that you wish to comment on as the previous speaker. You can talk as much as you want to, but just be sure to give others a chance to speak as well. And there'll be a three minute limit subject to moderator discussion so we can keep things moving along. And all amendments must be submitted in writing as soon as it is offered. And again, if you can just take your cell phones and put them on silent or vibrate, whichever you prefer, that would be great. Uh, something that's been added since I was up here last time. Um, entertain a motion to allow department heads and others who are not registered voters in the town of Hadley to be allowed to address the town meeting uh, from time to time for information. Do I have a motion? Second. All those in favor, please signify by raising your cards. Awesome. Thank you. All those opposed? Be it noted that was unanimous. Oh, yes, be it noted that was unanimous. You changed sides since the last time I was here, I didn't know. you? They keep, keep me on yeah, my toes. I'm used to turning the other way. Okay. All right. Do, do, do. I'm going to be reading the articles in motion form and looking for a second. Once the article has been seconded, we will be addressing the article, and you're free to ask questions at that time. So, jumping right into it, Article 1. Move the town vote to amend fiscal year 2023 annual budget from $19,421,603 to $19,641,131 as funding therefore raised and appropriate and transfer from available funds the amount in Table 1A as presented at the October 27th, 2022 special town meeting and incorporated by reference herein. The select board recommends this 5-0-0. The finance committee recommends it 5-0-0. And to address this, I'd like to call on Carolyn Brennan, the town administrator. 
Oh, I need a second. I'm sorry. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> Carolyn, you're up. Good evening. I'd like to explain what those requests are for increase. Uh, line item 122 is the Board of Selectmen salaries. We had an employee on medical leave for an extended period of time, and this was the cost to hire a temporary employee to fill in during those six weeks. 145 and 152 is impacts the treasurer's salary and the human resources salary line item uh, pertains to support to our benefits coordinator as well. This is an increase for a part-time assistant that is shared between these two departments and increasing this position to full-time will give, give each of these departments more clerical assistance as well as providing support when either positions are vacant due to sickness, vacation, or other related absences. These are basically one-person departments, and so this will be extremely beneficial for the treasurer as well as the benefits coordinator. 146 is the collector's hours. Uh, at the last town meeting, an increase of two and a half hours weekly was allocated to the treasurer's salary line item to provide tax title assistance to the treasurer. Uh, the assistant collector took on those uh, re responsibilities and works down in, uh, obviously, the collector's office and um, is able to provide support to both of those offices during that time. So it's really kind of a housekeeping thing is to put those 2.5 hours back into the collector's salary line item. The rest of these... Uh, requests here um, are all related to, um, no, this was the beginning of, an, of, of a three-year contract for contract negotiations for dispatch, which is also called communications, police, and DPW. So those following increases um, are a part of the negotiations that, um, from the impact of negotiations. So those were um, ratified this summer. And I'd like to call on Amy for the Finance Committee presentation. Amy Fighton, excuse me. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to go over how we were gonna pay for this. If, okay, great, the slide is up. So I just wanna point out, um, this is our $19 million budget, and the only real change on our $19 million budget is where you see the 474,000. We, at the annual town meeting, uh, put in $255,000 of free cash from 2021 free cash. Now we are adding the $219,000, which Carolyn just talked about, um, and we're adding that from the 2022 free cash to equal the $474,000. So it's coming from free cash. Any questions on Article 1? Seeing none, uh, Article 1 is a majority vote. Those in favor, please signify by raising your card. Thank you. You can put those down. Those opposed? Unanimous, Jess. Article 2. Move the town vote to amend fiscal year 2023 Enterprise Fund annual budgets from $2,482,697 to to $2,522,319, and as funding therefore raised and appropriated and transfer from available funds the amount in Table B1 as revised below and presented at the October 27th, 2022 Special Town Meeting and incorporated by reference herein. Do I have a second? All right, moved and seconded. Select board recommends 500. Finance committee recommends 500. And Carolyn, you're up again. Sure. Uh, 440 is sewer and 450 is water salaries. So this obviously is also an impact of uh, collective bargaining because some of these uh, those items have to be divided between the three divisions: highway, water, and sewer. And then 450 is expenses um, incurred for water for the water pump upgrades at the plant, as well as well as water upgrade for the meter reading and the testing equipment. The Hadley Media salaries is uh, we hired a new media director, Alex, to your left, and he is he is covering a lot of remote meetings. So we did hire him um, at, for full time, which is, was just a few more hours than what he was getting weekly. So that's what that increases. 
Okay, and so the total on that is about $39,000. They're all going to be coming out of the wastewater reserves, water reserves, Hadley Media Reserves. So the $39,000 is getting added into those, and so that's where we bring the $2.5 million bottom line on that. Any questions or comments regarding Article 2? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor of Article 2, please raise your card. Thank you. You can put those down. Those opposed? Article 2 passes unanimously. And Jess, that was a very nice touch to have orange cards so close to Halloween. Well done. More thought goes into these meetings than you think. Article 3, motion. Move the town transfer funds from various accounts as delineated in Article 3.1 of the special town meeting warrant for October 27th, 2022, and incorporated by reference therein. Do I have a second? Seconded. I did. I read it in motion form. Yeah. Done it for 18 years that I'm aware of. <laughs> oh, please feel free to check me. It's been a while since I've been here. So I'm not knocking the rust off, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> Select Board recommends 500. Finance Committee recommends 500. Um, Randy Iser, if you would address, please. Randy, if you could lower the, the mask so make it clearer for people with hearing. Thank okay. you. Okay. So, Article 3.1 and Article 3.2 are housekeeping articles, and we're dealing with Article 3.1 right now. And it's cleaning up of prior capital balances. These are projects that are either completed and have a leftover balance or projects that were never started and the amount requested is no longer valid and will have to be rescoped and valued. The amounts left over will return to capital stabilization and these projects were uh, public safety complex insulation from 2014, public safety complex sally port repairs from 2017, and HVAC attic venting from 2018. Any questions or comments concerning Article 3.1? Edwin, if you could lower the mask down, just for clarity. Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street. What the heck is the Sally Port? <laughs> Chief, are you here? There he is. Hopeful. Hopeful. Everybody got that? It's a garage. Any other questions concerning Article 3.1? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your orange cards. Thank you. You can put those down. Those opposed? Jess, that was unanimous also. Article 3.2, motion. Move the town vote to reappropriate funds from the completed projects as delineated in Article 3.2 of the special town meeting warrant for October 27th, 2022, and incorporated by reference herein. Do I have a second? Moved and seconded. Mr. Iser, you're on again. Thank you so much. Uh, this has a school security upgrade. The remaining funds from a completed project will be redirected to partially pay for the school ceiling tile replacement listed in the capital requests this evening. Any questions concerning Article 3.2? Seeing none, move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your orange cards. Thank you. Those opposed? They have an agreeable crowd tonight, Jess. Another unanimous. Hold on, she says. You know something I don't know? <laughs> Article 4. Here we go. But don't boom. Motion. Move the town vote to appropriate $1,860,364 for expenses associated with capital projects as delineated in Article 4 of the special town meeting warrant for October 27th, 2022 
and incorporated by reference herein and to fund said appropriation to transfer $48,298 from free cash, $53,333 from water reserves, $42,333 from sewer reserves, $20,000 from Hadley Media Reserve, and $38,000 from capital stabilization and the treasurer with the approval of the select board to authorize the borrowing of $1,658,400 under and pursuant to chapter 44, section seven and eight of the general laws and or any statutory authority. And moved and seconded. The select board recommends 500, finance committee 500, capital planning committee 400. No, it actually was corrected. We addressed it with town council previously. It was 401. Uh, there was a member of the capital planning committee that could not make it. So somebody said, well, they're not here, so we have to abstain for them. And in, in working with town council, they said, eh, you can't do that. Uh, since there were four people that were present and they all voted to recommend, we're changing that to 400. Just for clarification's sake, there are only four people that were present. All right, so let's see who's on the hook for this one. Article four. That's me. Randy, hey, check it out. Yeah. Okay, there are 15 items uh, involved in this article and everything is being treated together because all the items are considered necessary. Uh, this is not a wish or a want list. This is a necessity list. Uh, there'll be a PowerPoint uh, presentation you can go through and the department heads will answer any questions that you have regarding this article. Oh, yes, and Joyce Chungle wants me to tell you that there is no change in taxes regarding this article. Before we jump into the specifics, I'd like to review everything. Uh, Chief Mason, you're on here for the police body cameras, if you would, please. Good evening, everyone. Mike Mason, Chief of Police. Very short, three slide, quick presentation for you. Uh, this is a technology replacement, technology upgrade for us. Uh, as you know, FY19, somewhere around there, we obtained about $50,000 from a state uh, from the state budget with the help of Dan Carey uh, to begin our body camera and cruiser camera program. We kind of broke it into two parts and for some of the money we came to town meeting in capital. Uh, the majority of the money we went through uh, the state budget for it. Um, as we stand right now, this has been on our capital replacement because we're told that the technology does get older and, and it does need replacement. As we stand, the body cameras themselves and some of the docking systems and some of the technology that goes along with that is what needs replacing. The actual cruiser camera part of it, all of the things that go into the cruisers, uh, is still seems to be working fine and still is holding up well. Uh, that's what we came to you folks for three or four plus years ago. Um, so Hadley money goes a lot further than state money, I guess. That's just the way that always works. <laughs> uh, so what we're looking to, uh, to replace is our server system, the docking system, and the cameras themselves. The company that we went through originally for this was bought out by Motorola. Um, they have since basically discontinued the cameras that we are using, and things are taking so much longer to get and are costing so much more. We're uh, the cameras are going down quicker than we, can kind of, than we can get them back up and running and out on the road. This is an extraordinarily valuable program for us. Uh, for the last, if you uh, go to the last slide, just so you know that we did our due diligence, we did try to get some grants or free money from other places. Unfortunately, with us being, we were the, we were the first town or city anywhere in our area that I'm aware of that had a full fully operational body and cruiser camera program. It didn't pay off for us to be first this time around uh, because they're only offering grants as we stand right now for new or expansion programs. So as I mentioned, this is a scheduled replacement. 
It is on the early end of the schedule, but it is within the parameters that they gave us, and it is only about half of the system that we need replacement for. Thank you, Chief. Um, again, I want to go through everything before we start asking questions, but Chief, I'm sure you'll have questions to be available. Um, I'd like to address the school ceiling tile replacements and smoke alarms. Christine Pipsinski. There she is, okay. You can pull the mic down. Should have worn higher boots, I'm sorry. So as you can see, um, due to humidity uh, during pandemic, classrooms weren't being used, air conditioner wasn't on, the tiles are very old and they started sagging and falling. Um, if you look at, you know, either the weather decay or the fact that they're, they're old and they're ugly and they're dirty. Uh, so we do need to replace them and we're hoping to do, we're doing a drop down ceiling like we have in the library. It will give us access to the electrical system it will be much more efficient. It'll save us on heat. And if you have any questions, just ask. Christine, you do smoke detectors? Oh, also with the smoke detectors. This is essentially an upgrade, and I'm sure um, Chief Bank and Able can speak to this also if you need him to. But essentially, this is just updating our system and it needs to be done every once in a while. It's, a sa it's for safety. So both of these articles really do have to do with safe safety. Thank you. Alex, my note says that you're gonna speak to the $20,000 for Hadley Media. Is that a fair assumption? Okay. You haven't got a microphone, so come on up here. You're tall, so you won't mess up with my microphone height. Okay, for those who don't know me, Alex Marsh, uh, Director of Hadley Media. Um, all right, so since I came aboard, I um, used whatever was left of our uh, capital funding that my pre predecessors left. Uh, bought a lot of necessary equipment, such as batteries, um, half the stuff you see on that table. Um, a lot of necessary things to keep the uh, department moving and keep content coming to you with uh, important information. Um, first of all, all of this is coming out of our reserve fund, which has been allocated for years upon years upon years. We have about 170 currently right now before you guys vote on today. Um, we are asking for 20 grand. It's just a lump sum that we use throughout our tenure with our uh, capital purchases. Um, however, these are going to be some of the immediate um, purchases here. We have the uh, JVC camera. We're going to get two of those. Um, I've tried looking for similar cameras over here. Um, unfortunately, they don't really make them anymore, so we are forced to get those with the uh, new uh, battery. We're getting two of the uh, laptops on the bottom left corner for um, basic uh, small committee uh, um, meetings, such as the Climate, committee, climate Change Committee, uh, the, the uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. Um, I hope I got that right, Mark. And um, Board of Health, when we get to it, pretty much we'll hook up our, uh, already, uh, our already purchased OWLs and we'll just uh, run it through with a uh, program called OBS, which is what we're using to live stream to Facebook and YouTube tonight along with uh, channel 192. Um, we're gonna have a, a production assistant and hopefully some interns from the high school come aboard. So we're getting some uh, headsets to communicate for events like graduation and over town meetings. And the bottom right corner is a, we're getting one more of those laptops. That's the current laptop on the table right there. Uh, that'll pretty much be used for field shoots, such as sports and other events and uh, meetings such as select board and town meeting and other um, uh, meetings. And that's pretty much the gist of it. Do I get a second on that? Second. All right, there is a second. I just wanted to make sure we're going to cover, cover all bases so town council doesn't get mad at me. All right, questions, 
Got two microphones right there. Somebody's got to have a question. Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor of Article 4, please signify by raising your orange cards. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, what's that? Randy, that was in your purview. I thought you addressed that. Scott. Scott, okay. My apologies. Miscommunication is the rust, I'm sorry. Good evening, Go uh, Scott McCarthy, uh, DBW director. Scott, you gotta, you gotta speak up, get right into the microphone. Good evening, Scott McCarthy, DBW director. The, the first item on our agenda is to replace a Two thousand and eight four dump one ton dump truck. The the uh, vehicle has met its useful life life for us. Uh, a couple years ago, it had a new body put on it, but the uh, cab and a lot of the suspension parts are really starting to rot out, and the vehicle needs to be replaced. Uh, estimated arrival of a new vehicle is two years. Uh, it's it is not readily available. Uh, the next item is a 1997 international dump truck. It is used for sanding and plowing and paving of our streets. Uh, once again, the vehicle has met its useful life for us. It is extremely rotted, <coughs> uh, rusty and rotted beyond repair. Around 10 years ago, the vehicle was uh, repainted and a new body put on it. But at this point, uh, the cab and a lot of the suspension is rotted beyond repair. Uh, there's another slide, I believe, next to show the frame on the vehicle. Uh, it's starting to separate between the double frame, so it's uh, in very poor condition. It, and, and once again, it is a plow truck in a sander in the wintertime. Uh, Callahan well reconditioning. Uh, <clears throat> well number three in our water plant. Uh, the production of water is uh, diminished, and we would like to rehab, <coughs> rehabilitate the well to produce more water uh, every day. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty standard procedure. Uh, the other ones have been done, and number three needs to be done now to increase the volume of water we can produce every day. Next is a 2014 Ford uh, pickup truck used by the water department. Uh, currently has 85,000 miles on it. It's starting to uh, show its age and some rust and uh, minor mechanical problems. Uh, once again, a replacement vehicle is close to two years out. So we're trying to be proactive in replacing this vehicle. Uh, also, the new vehicle would have an enclosed back section a lot of our tools in the vehicle are ex exposed to the weather, and we'd like to uh, enclose that vehicle to keep everything out of the weather. Uh, currently, the water department does not have any garaging for their vehicles. They are left outside. Uh, next is uh, <clears throat> the mechanic's truck. It's a 2005 Ford pickup truck. Uh, it was originally the sewer department truck. It was handed down to the uh, mechanic. It has 154,000 miles on this, and it is really rotted out. Uh, today we were trying to haul some lawnmowers with it, and the trailer hitch broke off due to rot. Uh, so once again, but that vehicle would re the sewer department is looking for the same vehicle. Uh, we don't have a slide of it, but it's on the art the warrant for the same vehicle as the water department and that sewer department truck would be handed down to the mechanic. So he wouldn't be getting a new truck, but we have a ve uh, good vehicle in our fleet that be can be handed to the, uh, me the mechanic's garage. Sewer department roots, roofs on the pump stations. In the Springtown meeting, we were approved $75,000 to do this project and our estimates came in uh, $25,000 over budget, so we're, we're looking for 
an additional $25,000 to replace the sewer station roofs. Uh, currently, they are, they are asphalt shingles, and we are go looking to replace them with metal roofs. <clears throat> uh, the grant study, we were awarded a $100,000 grant from uh, the state. We have to match, put in $25,000 to that. It's to do a, a study on the sewer system, the wastewater treatment plant for any kind of upgrades and the sewer system itself. Uh, so it's a real necessity for us to uh, look at the sewer system for any future needs that it may have coming down the road. So we are looking for $25,000 to match into the grant. <clears throat> Next is a 1984 Case Tractor. Uh, it was given to the town through a military surplus. Uh, the tractor is currently uh, out, just about out of service. Uh, we can't get parts anymore for it, and it's got some mechanical problems that need to be fixed, and it's somewhat unusable. Uh, so we would like to replace that tractor. Uh, we do roadside mowing on it with it. Uh, a lot of fields and stuff, the landfill we have to mow. We use that tractor, uh, water, water department fields and uh, various other uh, fields that go on with our water system and et cetera. And, like it's, and also roadside mowing. Next is a 1995 John Deere <coughs> payloader. Uh, that vehicle has some mechanical problems and we cannot get parts for it anymore. Uh, it's somewhat met its useful life for us and we are looking to replace that. Next is a 1995 Ford Vactor truck. Uh, this vehicle, it's, it, it's a very pricey item for us, but it is a, a real necessity for us. Uh, it acts for, as a machine to relieve any sewer plugs, if there's any sewer plugs in the system, a vacuum system for cleaning, uh, sewer pump stations. Uh, the vacuum can be used for cleaning all our catch basins in town and any hydraulic excavating if we have any kind of uh, utility emergency and we need to do hydraulic excavating, that vehicle can be used for that. Uh, it is a very handy piece of equipment to have in our fleet. Uh, they are not readily available to call in to rent one or get one at a drop of a dime. Uh, just and it, it is a very, very needed machine for us. It, this vehicle is just so rotted, it's almost, we can't use it. Uh, if, you, if you forward the slide, you can see that's the debris tank and all the white the holes that are white are holes through the uh, debris tank to the outside. Uh, we tried patching it multiple times, but it's just so bad right now we can't patch it anymore. That's more holes in the Vactor truck in the debris tank. It, it's rotted beyond repair. Next is a 2017 uh, mini loader that we use. This is probably the most used piece of equipment in our fleet. Uh, this vehicle <coughs> is not, not the best for us. It's uh, very costly for us to maintain right now. It has a lot of mechanical breakdowns and it's not under warranty anymore. The warranty was extended on it for a little bit of time because we're having so many problems and now that it's over and we're still having mechanical breakdowns that we are now paying out of pocket. We'd like to replace it with something that may, may be, or is better for us and will and we'll, we'll not have as many breakdowns. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. All right, time for questions. Got a microphone there, a microphone there. Please, uh, if you have a mask, pull down the mask just for clarity of audio. Uh, state your name and your residential address. Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. Is it typical for so many things to be needing to be replaced at once? I don't remember that in my years coming here. Anyone care to? Scott, would you care to address that? Some of these vehicles have been on prior 
town meeting articles and got rejected. And it, the, our problems are just keep getting compounded because we're not replacing the vehicles. So that's why our list is so long. Uh, and I, I guess, and just everything seems to have really gone downhill fast. I know a couple of years ago we had talked about uh, putting these on, but when COVID happened, uh, the town decided not to do that because we, they were unsure of funding. So this is a list dating back a couple of years now. Peter Matusko, 19 Middle Street. My question is, is why are we getting one ton trucks? The GVW on a 350 or a one ton is like 12,000, whereas a three quarter is 10,000. So what's the difference of spending an extra $15,000 from a one ton truck to just getting a three quarter? And then the other question is, is for that mini loader, do you plan on getting the same mini loader that's gonna be having the same problems? And what was the warranty that you purchased for that loader? What was that warranty for and how long? The mini loader was purchased before my uh, start at the town of, of employment. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the manufacturer's warranty was on it. I know it was extended for some warrant for some, because we were having so many problems with the emission system and other things. And we, we are looking to replace it with a different brand. Uh, so it would be different. Uh, your, the, uh, your question about the trucks, the one ton trucks with our, the weight we carry, we really need that heavier suspension on it uh, of the, uh, 10,000 pound GVW on the one ton versus a 8,600 on a three quarter ton. Plus the plowing, we get a heavier front end on the one tons. So that's why we're looking to do that. And on the, uh, the 550 pickups, I believe those are 16,000 pound GVW. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. I had a question about the items that you mentioned were going to not be available for a couple years. Are we going to prepay them in advance to avoid inflationary rises? Are we putting deposits down? Are we just keeping the money aside? Can that money earn interest until we pay for the vehicles if we can't get them right away? Please. I'm Linda Sanderson, treasurer. Uh, we don't pay for any items until they arrive or until they're on their way. Um, the reason they have to be approved now is even though there's a two, there may be an up to a two year wait on receiving some of these, but in order to place the order, we have to have town authorization. So yes, it is going to stay in the, in the town funds. And even if we go out borrowing for other items that we have acquired this year, we're not going to be borrowing on the items that we have not received. So. Yes, we get, the, we get the benefit of it both ways. And I don't know how many vehicles that are, but there's at least two uh, and up to several more that we are most likely not going to be receiving in 23, um, maybe in 24, and we don't borrow until the year after we receive it actually, so and the payments are uh, begin the year after. Sir. Uh, Mike Moriarty. Uh, Mike, you can straighten the microphone up and be more comfortable. My question is on the vacuum truck. Um, do you have any records showing how much that truck was used over the past year, two years, three years, um, just to prove that it's worth spending $600,000? Because that's what the new one's going to cost. Uh, the answer is that we have no real records of it. Since I've been here, the vehicle has been in a real disrepair and we try to use it very minimal because usually when it goes out, it comes back broke down. So we try to save it for a real, real emergency if we have a water emergency or a sewer emergency. Uh, the, uh, I can tell you uh, having a contractor come in to uh, clean our catch basins is almost $2,000 a day to get a vac their truck on rental to come here. They are very expensive to get and they, they're, they're not around the corner to have. Uh, we, we can do a lot with it if we own it ourselves. Just like I said, the vehicle is so bad, it just does not stay together. It constantly breaks down. Edward, 
Edwin Mentusco again. Um, on the sewer grant match study department upgrades, you mentioned 25,000. It says here in my uh, article that it's 24,000. Was that just uh, a... Okay, thank you. Dan Dudkevitz, 130 Hockenham Road. Are we buying these things tonight? This vote here, are we buying or do we go on to a ballot later on? Linda, would you care to address that at a microphone, please? These are not going to ballot. When we go for ballot questions on borrowing, it's because it's a debt exclusion as a, a kind of an override, which means you need to go to vote at the ballot in order to pay for the items and then the our taxes will be erased by the appropriate amount to pay off that borrowing. The borrowing that we're doing for the items here tonight are through, um, they're going to be paid through our budgets. We have budgets, um, we have line items within the budgets for water, sewer, and general fund to pay for our borrowing. This has been a change um, in the last few years to try and pay for more within the budget because um, we're less inclined to approve debt exclusions now since we, since we have the buildings and we are, we're buying truck, we still need, have the need for the trucks and other items, but we're, we're trying to get it so that we're buying it a little more easily. And we'll be, we will be voting on these items individually, correct? The way the articles are written, we'll be voting on them en masse as one vote. Whoa. Peter Matusko, my question is when it comes to the dump truck, and I know because of the salt and the usage of it, now would we be able to allocate money because of the rotting of the frames, whether if it's this vehicle or other vehicles, to having regular undercoating, to saving and pre preserving things like the rusting of the bottom of the vehicles and the frames, because it seems like it's all because of rot is the reason why we're replacing all these vehicles is because of rot. Is there going to be any type of prevention for these vehicles to not have to spend five years down the road because of all this rot. To answer the question is that yes. So after a snow or ice event, the vehicles are cleaned and washed with a salt neutralizing compound. And in the spring, the, the trucks are thoroughly washed and steam cleaned and the uh, vehicle maintenance department uh, puts fluid film on the frames and all the undercarriages of the vehicles to try to prevent any further uh, rotting. So yes, we do try to do our best to clean them and protect them. Dina Friedman, 16 Barstow Lane. If we vote for this article, and many of these appear on the ballot, are they, do they appear individually or are they appearing as one package? It's not going to appear on the ballot. If we vote on it and we approve it tonight, it's a done deal. I thought it was goes for voting for Prop 2 and a half. No? No. Okay. Sorry. Thank no. you. It's okay. Steve Simcoe, it's 81 River Drive. Uh, the same thing Peter was talking about with your undercoat. Steve, the into the microphone. No. Yes. We can't hear you. No. All right. You said that you spray the frames underneath and everything, but what about the doors and the fenders and the cab corners and over the wheel wells? That's where they're rotting. These trucks with 80,000 miles on them with diesels should last a lot longer than 80,000 miles. They need to be oiled the right way, not just the frames, but everything, 100%. I understand what fluid film is, but they got to get inside, do it the right way with the doors and the cab corners and everything, not just the frames. And any area that is open that he can get the fluid film in with a, a straw or whatever, you put on the on the application gun, they spray. Uh, the smaller vehicles go up on the, uh, the car lift. Yep. To uh, get, and on the bigger trucks, we have to obviously do it from the ground. Right. The same question. Okay. Were you guys able to hear that in the back? Okay, good. I want to make sure Scott was heard. David Phil. Sorry. Just pick it up, Dave, yeah. 
David Phil, 39 Nightly Road. Scott, do you want to talk? Dave, about Dave, really quick. Are you talking as David Phil? I, vote I am, not, fina not finance. Okay, not finance committee. Correct. Okay, I want to make that perfectly clear. This is not the finance committee speaking. Do you want to go through and tell us if there's any trade-in values for the old equipment or vehicles? There is trade-in value for all the equipment. Uh, some of the, the vendors do not want to put a number on it yet because that the replacements are so far out. I only have a tentative number on the payloader. Uh, one, it was just one person that looked at it thus far. They offered $28,000 trade-in on the payloader. But the other vehicles, no vendors have put any numbers on it yet because they're not sure of the condition or how many more miles or hours will be on that equipment when the new equipment arrives. But there is money available for trade-in. These numbers that we're requesting are the full uh, replacement cost, but they will be less. How much less, I'm not sure, but there is some value in our vehicles for trades. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. I'm wondering on the more expensive items, particularly the swerve factor, which sounds very important, um, has an analysis been, analysis been done about the average need per year that you've been renting swerve factors over the life of the vehicle, over 10 years? What would renting it cost compared to buying it? Shell Horowitz, um, I didn't hear an answer to the question that was raised about are we able to lock in these prices. Um, I heard that we don't pay for it right away, but that piece wasn't addressed. Linda, or Scott? Scott, okay, Scott's got it. All the prices will be honored ex except for the Vactor truck. There could be escalation charges on that due to manufacturers' uh, uh, inflation rates. Uh, right now, they are willing, one manufacturer is willing to hold that price that I talked to, but there could be escalation charges on that. The other vehicles, when we sign a purchase agreement, that price is locked in. Um, Linda, um, a question about analysis for the vector. Was that done that you're aware of? Okay. Uh, no, an analysis has not been done. And like I said, uh, when we go out with it, it's at a very limited use. Uh, catch base and cleaning and stuff, we are actually lacking on. Uh, we could be doing a lot more, but it's so costly to us to do with a contractor we do the bare minimal any catch basin that is over 60 percent of capacity is supposed to be clean to meet our ms4 permit and there's a lot more of them that need to be uh, cleaned on a regular basis than we can do we 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 cannot afford to clean our catch basins uh to hire it out it, it, we would we wouldn't be able to afford it Um, I work for a pretty good sized construction firm and um, they don't own one. Uh, they hire the truck, it's cheaper, and they've done the cost analysis on it. Um, <clears throat> to not have a cost analysis on a $600,000 item is crazy. I don't see how we can vote that in. Um, hold on for one second, James. One of the differences between a construction company that works nine to five or later and a town that has emergencies at 1 a.m. is how much your truck is used and you can plan ahead for it. We can't plan for our emergencies and I know several times in the last month this truck has had to go out and there was, we even requested 
from a local company if they could come and they could not. Yes, sir. Uh, Dan Kelly, 117 Stockbridge Street. I was just wondering why these are all, these articles are all included in one article because some of the things I'd love to vote for, but I have to vote no because there's a few. For example, the payloader was voted down five months ago and it's back again today. So is there any way we can separate these? There is a way to separate them. It is a move to separate the article. What it would be is a motion to remove whichever one you would like to, remove that from the article and vote on it separately. And it would just be a motion. Oh, Linda. I mean, okay, Linda, please, yes. Yes, hi. Um, most of you know that I get involved in budgeting. And this is, these are the capital items. And it's time for, I, it's really time for us to consider the capital items, not as a pick and choose, and do we need this, do we need that, but as a capital budget that we have to pass every year. It's no surprise that we have to replace our equipment, whether it's our trucks, our school buses, our police cruisers, fire engines. This is an ongoing plan that we have to replace these items. They're in use every day, and in some cases every night, all weekend. They're not like my car where I drive it to work and park it there all day and then drive it at home. Their job is to go to work, get in these vehicles and go around and do work. We have to have planned replacement. And I think putting them together in a budget like this, this is our capital budget and showing, you know, you have four pages on all the different pockets of money and how we're going to pay for these within the budget and within the funding that we already have. And this is a, a lot of effort that is going to, this is responsive to what the towns, what you have come up with in the past saying, we don't want to be passing debt exclusions for all these little things anymore. So this is a plan that's been put together to fund what's needed now. Yes, it's larger than it has been. That's because we've had a bit of a pile up. And as you've heard, we also have to order ahead. So this is, this is larger than usual. There is going to be a put, I think the committee has already been put together to work between now and annual town meeting to anticipate whether they are going to continue to be uh, this large and therefore we need to come up with another um, way to approach our capital funding. Do we need to find a stream of income for the capital stabilization account? Do we need to increase the amount uh, that we're paying uh, for debt and interest out of the budgets? How are we going to do this? Um, we have some extra cash on hand now. Um, if you've read through and seen the balances, we've got some pretty healthy balances in there and we want, to, we want to use it to purchase some of the items, but we don't want to drain it, otherwise we don't have options between now and annual town meeting to come up with what's the best way to put that money to work for us to uh, take care of the town's needs, much of which is this capital uh, budget. So. Um, I know we've done it that way in the past, but we have to think of this as we have to keep uh, we have to keep this business running. This is what DPW does. This is what police, fire. This is what our groups do. They go to work and they get in these vehicles and they wear them out. And we have to have planned replacement. And if we if there's one in need of replacement, as a, and as a group of a hundred something people decide, no, not that year. That's not really that's not that's not really keeping our our uh, departments in business. And that's not really keeping your roads and your sewer and your water. That's not keeping us taken care of the way, uh, the way we're supposed to be serviced. So there is a reason to, for this, and um, you know, obviously you have the, the choice of approaching it in a different way. But I just wanted you to know there's there is uh, an explanation, and I and I hope you will consider that. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, Michael Boyle, 77 Hockenham. Uh, since the payloader was brought up, uh, having been voted down in the spring, uh, my recollection of that meeting was that the concern was an issue of um, the, uh, where the funding was coming from and the split from the water versus other uh, things. Has that been modified at all or, uh, or addressed? Because I don't recall it being so much a matter that people didn't think it was necessary, but were concerned about how the funding was being allocated. You're back on, Linda. <laughs> uh, <coughs> um, yes, that's 
That's right. Um, I watched that from home. I was, I was out. I was not here at that meeting. I, had, I was uh, out on medical leave. And yes, it was frustrating to see. It went down because of the allocation between water and uh, general fund, how it was being funded. And it kind of got off track into, <coughs> into that, and therefore it was voted down. Um, so uh, back to the drawing board, I mean, the, the need, it was never said, nothing ever came up at that meeting saying that we didn't need it. It was just how it was going to be paid for. And so, as I said, we put more of an effort into how these things uh, are going to be funded and what's the appropriate funding for it. Scott has done some work with uh, his department to find out what, the al uh, what a better allocation is between highway and water. I believe it was at 50-50 before, and now it is one quarter, three quarters. One quarter of it will be paid out of, um, uh, the debt and interest will be paid out of uh, the, the water receipts, and three quarters of it will be paid out of the general fund. Brenda Feidenkiewicz, 99 Rocky Hill Road. You know, I, I take a, a little bit of offense to all of this. You know, I own a business, and if I want, oh, sorry about that. I don't know how we're, I'm not good with technology. But um, my thing is that when we have equipment, we have to plan well in advance. I can't just say, oh, we're, we're, we're going to do this. And I know we have to plan. That's really vital to our town. We cannot come up with money like that. But I'm saying if we've got all this extra free cash, we have to put some away. I understand that. But you know what? There's a lot of hurting people here that, you know, if we've got extra cash, we should give some back to the taxpayers. I mean, really. You know, I see this, I see this equipment, and I understand, Scott, you have a hard job to do. I understand. I know. I deal with equipment every single day. But there are things that you can do. I sell one of those trucks. I'd love to have that truck for my fleet. And you said everything has to be replaced, but then you said that, oh, well, we can, this can go down to the mechanic. The mechanic can use this truck, so obviously it's not that bad. We have to be careful with what we do. Planning is a virtue in this town. It really is. But we have to be smart about it. I don't know how many, I, I would love to have a punch list like this. And we budget more, private business really budgets a lot tighter than most people do. We don't have an open pocketbook. And we pay big taxes too, big taxes. So. I understand, but we need to be smart. Some of the things that you guys are saying, I love that punch list. I can't do it. And I know that you were saying, uh, Ms. Nevin Smith, that you know well, they go out all the time. Yeah, they do, but I'd like to see the records of how many times. I know they go out. We go out too. We have emergency jobs with our property, so it's not nine to five. Mine's 24 seven. Thank you. Dan Kelly, 117 Stockbridge Street. And Scott, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I would ask that we take the VAC truck and the payloader out of this boat. Because I agree that 80 people should not be deciding these big money items. So we want to spend a million dollars and 80 people are going to decide this in a 5,000 person town. So I ask we take the VAC truck and the payloader out. Is that a motion? It's a motion. All right, there's a motion to remove the vector truck and the payloader from Article 4. Pardon me? It needs to be in writing. If you could get that to us in writing up here. There's a form at the back table, I'm told. levity at the right time. <laughs> okay, we've got a motion, so hang on. Yeah.
All right, we're back at it. The motion is made to amend Article 4 to remove the payloader and the vector from the truck from Article 4. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. At this point, for I'd like to call on uh, Linda Sanderson for, is that what we talked about? Talk about the budget, yes. Please. Okay, I've been asked to go down through you these. We have four slides, and when, in your case, you've got, they're in your packet. Is it the green, Jennifer? It's the, okay, the, in the green packet, there's four, um, there's four blocks in a row. Close so, to the microphone. It's not working? No, you're just oh, closer get to closer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so the first one, uh, so we're paying for all of these items out of t two general uh, sources. One is borrowing, and we've talked about that tonight, and the, and the second one, or actually it's going to be the first one, is the, are the money that we have set aside for this. Um, so the first one, free cash and reserves. We have the police body ca cameras, that's the one that starts there. We are showing that the free cash is going to pay for some of it, but tonight we return some money to capital stabilization and the rest of it is going to come out of that, that money. The Callahan well is going to come out of water reserves. The uh, sewer grants match money is going to come directly out of sewer reserves. So remember, nothing on this page is being borrowed. This is going to be direct payment. Um, the mini loader um, is coming from three sources evenly, $18,334 evenly from free cash, water reserves and sewer reserves because it's split between highway water and sewer divisions of DPW. The school smoke alarms will be paid directly out of free cash and Hadley Media equipment will be coming directly out of um, Hadley Media reserves. So what does it do to these funds? On the next page, it will shows each of these funds and how much we, are, how much we have going into the meeting. So uh, the first column is our free cash. We are starting this, town, this meeting. These are all balances as of July 1. It was certified by the state. We have $1.7 million in free cash. The, part, the budget ports, portions of this and other articles, we're spending 234000 This current Article 4, taken right from the prior page, we're spending $48,000 in capital, leaving at the end of the meeting, and it'll be available for our annual town meeting, uh, 1,468,000. Water reserves, we were, we were certified at 1.2 million. 20,000 is coming out in other articles, 53,333 in the water reserve items that I, from the prior page, leaving 1.133 million um, in water reserves. Sewer reserves, um, maybe I won't read through every one of these. Okay, I mean, you, you can see what we're starting with, 350,000 sewer, less what we spent on other articles, less Article 4, leaving a balance of 255000 Hadley Media Reserves is there. Capital, you remember the sweeps article where we put the money back in, we're spending that money. So that will bring that down to $2,000. Um, water reserves, sewer reserves, Hadley Media Reserves, free cash. These, where does this money come from? When we did the budget each year, we project how much our income is going to be and we, set, and we vote on budgets, the expenditures. If, and, and we're conservative in town, we don't overestimate our, our uh, we're, we have conservative budgets and we have conservative projections. So we very often at the end of the year uh, maybe have taken in more money than we had projected. And the departments who are also very conservative spend less money than they had uh, been given. So in this case, uh, in the case of uh, the free cash, which is our highest one, we had about $500,000 in turnbacks from departments that did not spend the money on their, in their budgets. And um, we had uh, from the state excise tax 800,000 more than, um, they had, than they had said they were going to be paying us. This is why we have so much money in free cash this year. We do not want to just spend it all on capital. We need some time to figure out what to do with this, this funding, as I said before. Um, so there we are. Um, the rest of it, is going to be out of borrowing. So that's the third part, the, the next slide. And again, I won't go through each of these, but each of the trucks that's been discussed this evening, the first column is the amount that we need, and uh, we borrow the money, so the total at the bottom we're borrowing is $1.6 million. We pay them 
over between five to 10 years, which means about a fifth to one tenth of it. Let's say we do it over 10 years, that's $165,000 a year we're spending on the, uh, the payments on the debt and interest. It's out of three, uh, three categories. One is our general fund budget. Um, that's, uh, so we have almost a million dollars worth being paid out of the general fund budget. Uh, we have 358,000 out of water and 318,000 out of sewer. Uh, for the next slide, because you're wondering, what do you mean out of the budget? Well, you vote the budget each year, and these are line items that are in the budget. We have a debt and interest budget. Out of that, in within that budget, we have uh, debt, and, debt and interest being paid. We pay off half a million dollars every year out of this kind of borrowing. We pay it down, leaves room to borrow it again, or to, uh, to pay it down, we fill it up. This is how we keep the amount that we're spending on our capital even. and. Um, and yes, it is increasing by more than our budget. I'm sure you noticed that. Yes, it means that we're gonna push this, this payment out a little bit further. And once again, this, what we're, between now and annual town meeting, this group will hope, hopefully come up with a better plan, a different kind of a plan going forward so that we make sure we're covered up with our capital. And perhaps we'll be using some more out, money out of free cash and paying it down. I don't do the borrowing until June. So we have between now, we can even make some changes at annual town meeting if we change our mind, decide some of it should be paid. More of it should be paid out of cash and less of it out of borrowing. But we will, you know, we'll come back to you with those recommendations in, in the spring. Water budget, this is within the budget. We spend 200,000 for uh, debt and interest and so within the sewer budget, 133,000. So this is intentional spending. This is what the sewer reserves are for paying for capital items, and the budget is for paying this down. We may have to bump up water and sewer a bit because we've had a lot of borrowing, with, and we probably will have more upcoming borrowing with infrastructure, but um, that's where they stand right now. So when the question is, can we, how are we gonna pay for this? We have a plan for how we're going to pay for this, and without and increasing your taxes at all. Yes, I was going to call on you for Amy. Linda addressed it. Dan, I'm discussing the amendment currently. You are? Yes. All right. Comments on the amendment, which is to remove the payloader and the vector truck from Article 4. Mary Lou Lorenza, 13 Hadley Place. Closer to the microphone. Mary Lou Lorenza, 13 Hadley Place. Um, I'm looking at these requests, and um, I think they were very well thought out, and I like the idea that we're trying to uh, take a look at the whole picture. When I look at the idea that we have two 1995 vehicles that we're trying to replace, I don't I don't think that's frivolous. And I think to look at this whole picture and to see it taken as a whole to improve our fleet, to improve the safety and well-being of uh, our roads and uh, the town, I think is very well thought out. And I think we need to do it. I think to put those two vehicles particularly, they're 27 years old. I don't drive a 27-year-old car. I think most of the equipment in my house, uh, furnaces, uh, anything else, needs to be replaced after a while. It gets outdated. To be replacing them now with the rest of the um, uh, requests looks to me like stepping forward and moving ahead. And I think you sometimes need to do that. Um, so to split these off and to suddenly say, no, I think we should do it a number more years, they're going to be more expensive. They're going to be harder to replace. They're necessary, and I think when I look at the select board, the finance committee, and the capital planning committee, it's unanimous. We need to do it. Um, so I would recommend going along with the program you know, uh, looking at our finances and saying, let's just do it. Let's move ahead. Let's make a plan. Start maybe replacing our vehicles on a better um, routine. 
But right now, uh, I, don't, I don't have a problem keeping this all together, so I would vote against that amendment. Okay. Hello, Joe Minton, 10 Bayberry Lane. Uh, in 95, I lived in Northampton, and the sewer um, in front of our street backed up, and it came into our basement. Um, this sucked. Uh, our basement was completely flooded out with sewer from the street, and a back truck was used um, by the town of Northampton uh, in that situation. I was really glad they had it. Um, I don't think the comparison to a business is the right comparison. I do think there's a lot of time and attention. I really appreciate how you're handling the budget. And I want the town to have things to handle emergencies. I don't think it should be looked at as a construction company or another thing. This is a town. We have fire trucks that are very expensive because if your house is on fire, you want it there. I appreciate that you're asking for this and I appreciate that you've kept this fleet together in a way that probably has been unbelievably frustrating with many, many items that probably should have been replaced on a more regular basis. So I appreciate all the work that's being done to do this right so that we don't have to deal with this every year. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Allison Dantevenman, 25 East Hadley Road. I have a question. If we vote for this amendment and those uh, vehicles are removed, do we vote for them separately or do they just disappear from the warrant entirely? We would vote for them separately. Yes. Randy, are you speaking as a selectman or as a citizen? I'm out here with the citizens. Okay, all right. <laughs> Randy Iser to Autumn View Drive. I realize this is a lot of money that's being asked to be spent, but part of the reason we're here with all this stuff is because we've been kicking stuff down the road for a lot of years now. And I agree 100% that we need this stuff. The previous speaker made very good points for emergency situations. If somebody's house gets flooded or whatever, the town's gonna come and help. So it's truly a pay me now, pay me later thing. If we don't do it now, we're gonna be asked to do it next year and it's still gonna be a lot of money next year and it's still gonna be a lot of money the year after that. We're in a position to be able to afford it without increasing taxes, so I am against the amendment. You can tilt the microphone down. So. <laughs> Diane Stengel, 43 Breckenridge Road. Um, I am definitely for this amendment for similar reasons in that uh, this is the first time in many years of going to town meetings that I see a coherent approach to the budget of all of these pieces of equipment and also uh, an attempt to show us the need for that equipment. And I, I really appreciated the graphics uh, because it makes the point that we have, in fact, kicked the can down the road. And if we were going to ask for statistics, and I know this isn't fair because you're not, you haven't been here very long. Uh, is it Scott? Yes. Um, but I would like to see how many years we've turned them down. <laughs> A long list of years and items which have just been rejected for, you know, one reason or another because someone didn't think that particular piece of equipment was necessary. I'm very proud of our town. Um, I've proud of all the things that we've seen in how hard our employees work, and I appreciate that very much, so I want to thank you for that. And I think we, uh, we need to be more responsible fiscally than just simply line item by line item justifying each and every piece of equipment in this town. That would take forever if we really started to go down that road or continue in that road. Um, so it really needs to be a coherent, I don't care if you're a businessman or a private person, you have a plan in your budget. You don't, uh, you don't just throw money around a little bit. It's called being penny wise and pound foolish as I have heard it said. So um, I really appreciate this, what it looks to me like a new approach uh, to our budgets in Hadley. And uh, as things get more complicated and we have to wait two years for a piece of equipment, we have to be proactive and plan ahead. Um, so I really appreciate uh, the way it's done, and I would also vote down this amendment. And just as an aside for taxes in Hadley, for giving back money to 
taxpayers. Um, I would like someone to uh, verify this, but I, my understanding is that Hadley uh, has the, one of the lowest tax rates in the state. Was there a speaker that approached a microphone over here? No? Okay. Yes, sir. Ken Parker, 118 Mount Warner Road. Mr. Moderator, if you spend time traveling the roads of Hadley and looking at what's going on with the highways, etc., and you go east, west, north, or south, nothing can compare with what we have in Hadley. This group of people do a wonderful job with our highways and our other needs. And therefore, I will vote no on the amendment because I think we need to be proactive and get stuff going. I would move the question. Can't move it after you speak. Does anyone else care to speak? <laughs> nice try, Ken. You should know that. You were a moderator for a number of years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get my asbestos underpants on. <laughs> yes, sir. Rick, Rick Thayer, 179 Hockenham Road. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move the amendment. Move the amendment. No more discussion can be allowed. This is the majority, right? Two-thirds. Two-thirds. All those in favor of moving the amendment, please signify by raising your card. Wait, wait, hang on. What, what, what? That means no more, I'm sorry. It means no more discussion. We move right to a vote. I apologize. We are voting to confirm that discussion is over and that we want to vote. Okay, raise your cards if you think the discussion is over. Oh, smokes. All right, put those down. Anyone disagree? Jess, note it unanimous. We will move directly to a vote right now. This is a vote to amend Article 4 to remove the payloader and vector truck from Article 4, which would mean that we'd vote on them independently. This is a two-thirds vote. All in favor of the amendment to remove... Oh, simple majority. I apologize. Um, all those in favor of removing the payloader and the vector truck from Article 4, please signify by raising your orange cards. Thank you. You can put those down. All those opposed? Okay, article to amend or motion to amend fails. Any further discussion getting back directly to article four? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of article four, please signify by raising your cards. This is a two thirds vote. Thank you, you can put those down. All those opposed? Article four passes. I've been asked if you oppose, if you could raise your ballots so we can do a reverse count that way. If you were opposed to Article 4, please raise your cards. We just need to do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can I count eight? Okay. Sorry, Jess. All right, Article 5. Move the town vote to appropriate $17,661.67 and transfer funds as delineated in Article 5 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant Article um, October 27, 2022 and incorporated by reference herein. Select Board recommends 500. Finance Committee recommends 500. Seconded. This is a nine-tenths majority. Carolyn, I'd like to call on you, please. Sure, this is uh, municipal municipalities cannot pay invoices that are received after the close of the previous fiscal year, which is June 30th of last year. Anything that came in after June 30th, it, it needs town meeting approval to pay those invoices. So this is largely a housekeeping measure? Housekeeping. Okay. Any questions concerning Article 5? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 5, please signify by raising your orange card. Thank you. You can put those down. Those opposed? Uh, another unanimous, Jess. Article 6, CPA extensions. 
Motion, move the town vote to extend the completion deadline for the CPA projects delineated in Article 6 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 27th, 2022, and incorporated by reference herein. The Select Board recommends 500. Community Preservation Act Committee recommends 600. Finance Committee recommends 500. Seconded. Carolyn, is that you? No. Nope. Article 6. Mary Thayer. I'm sorry, Mary. There you are. Sorry about that, Mary. Mary Thayer, 179 Hockenham Road. I'm chair of the CPA committee. When a, when a Warren article is um, approved at town meeting, there's usually a time limit on how long the project can take. Um, and these two are almost done. They just needed a little more time. Um, the library window and bracket um, was taken out of the hooker school that was knocked down and the library is incorporating them in a way and they haven't quite finished doing that so they asked for a one-year extension. The Hockenham Cemetery fence um, has been, this was the first appropriation for that and most of the funds um, that were originally given at the ATM 2021 have been spent. There's just a little more and they're not quite sure it'll be done it wasn't quite done as of for today, so they'd like another extension on that as well. Okay. Is there any questions? Was this um, Article 6? Let's get, I get a second on that. Okay, good. Want to make sure we get that covered. Any questions or comments regarding Article 6? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by raising your orange cards. Thank you. You can put those down. Those opposed? Unanimous, Jess. Article 7, move the town transfer funds to and from various accounts as delineated in Article 7 of the Special Town Meeting Warrant for October 27th, 2022, and incorporated by reference herein. Select Board 500, Community Preservation Act 600, Finance Committee 500. Thank you. <laughs> Barry, you're up. These are more, um, Mary Thayer, 179 Hockenham Road. These projects are either, do, do not need the money for one reason or the other anymore. They're either done or they, or they weren't done. Um, the Russell School roof, 8,000 had been appropriated in 2019. Turns out a lot more is needed than 8,000 and there's a um, study going on um, to really take a look at that. So the 8,000 that was um, approved back then. It, we're asking to have it come back into the CPA historic um, bucket. The emergency rental assistance, um, the 25000 that was appropriate actually was not spent and the program has ended. The state had a lot of um, help for renters um, and so the, the town amount actually wasn't, um, wasn't a, used for um, anyone and they've ended the program. So that needs to come back to the housing. Russellville Cemetery was originally approved at 30,000. It came in a little under 15,000, so the project has ended, and this can be returned. Um, and then the um, Hadley Elementary School picnic tables were done, and there was $285 left over of that. So it's just to put the money back into the available funds under the CPA. Thank you, Mary. Any questions or comments concerning Article 7? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 7, please raise your orange cards. Thank you. You can put those down. Those opposed? Unanimous, Jess. Article 8, move the town vote to transfer $22,760 from the Community Preservation Act Historic Set-Aside Fund and $2,240 from the Community Preservation Act General Fund to complete the Hockenham Cemetery Fence Project and said funds to be expended under the direction of the Hadley Cemetery Committee and the town administrator, any unexpected funds will automatically be returned to the foregoing Community Preservation Act fund if not used within two years of the date of town meeting approval. Select Board recommends 500, CPA Committee 600, Finance Committee 500. And seconded. Mary, you're back up. Actually, I, 
Berg is chair of the cemetery committee. Maybe he can speak. Alan, we're bouncing it over to you. You're on. Thank you. Uh, Alan Weinberg, 108 Bay Road, um, the chairman of the cemetery committee. So we're asking for additional money to complete the Hakanam Fence project. Uh, we, the project is under contract um, with the monies that we've previously received, uh, and we're doing that uh, work now on the main portion of the project, which involves removing the old wall and, and putting in granite posts to replace the fence. Uh, we were not able to um, uh, contract for, the, for two additional elements of the project, which involves upgrading the turf parking area along, along the uh, fence uh, and the road, and uh, building a, a pillar uh, using the old stone to commemorate the old wall. Um, so if we get the, this additional money, that, those are the two things we, will, we hope to be able to do. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments concerning Article 8? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 8, please signify by raising your orange cards. Thank you. You can put those down. All those opposed? We have two opposing. Other than that, the motion passes. Article 8 was a majority vote, so Article 8 does pass. Article 9, Hopkins Playing Fields. Move. Move the town appropriate $1,000,000. $546,700 for the Hadley Public Schools Hopkins Academy Athletic Fields Rehabilitation and Creation Phase 2 project. Said funds will be expended under the direction of the Hadley Public School Committee and the town administrator to meet said appropriation vote <coughs> to transfer $90,965 from the Community Preservation Act Open Space Fund $705,735 from the Community Preservation Act General Fund, and the treasurer with approval of the select board is authorized to borrow $750,000 under Mass General Law Chapter 44B, as in Bravo, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes to the town, uh, notes of the town, therefore. The select board is authorized to enter into such agreement or agreements on behalf of the town as may be necessary to accomplish the purposes of this motion. Any amounts remaining unexpended or unencumbered at the end of two years from the date of this vote shall revert to the Community Preservation Act Fund. The select board recommends 500. Community Preservation Act Committee recommends 402. Finance Committee recommends 500. Do I have a second? Let's see, this is going to be Article 9. Mary? I'd be glad to talk about how this is funded and what effect that has on the, um, the CPA amount. I wonder if it would be good to have the school committee talk first about the project. They were going to be up next. Okay. Um, would you like me to? Um, yeah, if you would go and just go into the funding, we'll get that out of the way first. The CPA fund has available um, right now, this is a little updated from the, the June 30th figure, two million. That was two million four hundred, correct? Okay. I think we're going to swap out mics for you, Mary. Test. Okay, is it, that sounds good. Thank you. Go. So two million four hundred um, eleven thousand, and of that, um, and that includes what we just voted to put back into the CPA available fund. Um, two hundred eight thousand of that is set aside for housing and can't can't be used for either the cemetery or the um, playing fields. Um, so, what we wanted to do, why we said to do bonding is just to make sure that we have flexibility in the future. Um, if we do this project and it's voted on tonight, um, we'd be left with 775000 available in the CPA fund. And again, 208 of that is set aside for housing. 
we do, we will increase the state match will come in with whatever it might be in November usually, um, and we'll be collecting more real estate taxes um, surcharge. So it'll, it'll go up, but it's, again, it gives us more flexibility if we do the bonding. With the bonding, we're left with a million five, um, which if there are projects for next um, annual town meeting, it gives us more flexibility. So the bonding works, um, and Linda's been a bit Sorry, everyone. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> You're just proving you need the new equipment we voted on. <laughs> um, the way the bonding works, this is different from the other town bonding. Um, it does require a two-thirds vote at town meeting. It does not go on to a ballot vote. It does not affect the tax rate at all because it's taken out of future collections um, and the CPA fund. If we do a 10-year bond, um, it's about 94000 a year, principal and interest. If we do a 15-year, it's about 69000 Last year, um, the CPA fund had 300000 come in from the surcharge and also 289000 from the state. They, they matched the previous year. Last year we got a 100% match from the state, um, but we don't know what it'll be each year. Overall, the state has contributed 41% of the funds that have gone into the CPA, so this fields would be paid 41% on average by the state, which is a great way to get Hadley um, to get state funds. Um, so hopefully that, I can certainly answer more questions, but that, that's a good, framework of how we would do it. And we'd work with Linda on when to bond, and she would be obviously the one doing the work on that. OK, thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Paul Pfeiffer. I'm, uh, I've spent about eight years on the Hadley School Committee. And when I started, I found out that there was a, a draft plan to revise the Hopkins athletic fields. As many of you remember, uh, the Hopkins trustees facilitated the purchase of some abutting uh, agricultural acreage and then generously donated it to uh, Hopkins. And uh, we started to revise those plans, uh, a few folks in the community. We had some public meetings. We took some input on some current concerns, some, some hopes. CPA, through uh, town approval, uh, offered us some, some startup funds. We hired Berkshire Design. We put together a master strategy. And in that strategy, we looked at all the fields, uh, revising all the fields, and we broke it up into two phases, knowing that it's, it's a large project, it's going to take a lot of time, and it's expensive. And so then we went on to raise funds. And through the multiple contributions through the town, uh, through with CPA funds, some uh, generous funding from the Hopkins trustees, Steve Lewis Subaru, East Hampton Savings Bank, and, and over a dozen community members, I'm happy to say that in 2020, our first phase was completed. So if you go out there now, you'll see a, a new softball field, a new baseball, a revised baseball field, um, a soccer field, and you'll see a 2,100-foot 20 uh, asphalt uh, walk pa walking path. That was, not only does it provide access for emergency vehicles, it also uh, allows for community use of the fields. And if you're ever out there on the weekends or at a soccer game, a softball game, you'll see it gets a lot of use. So we're here to talk tonight about finishing that project that we, we started, finishing that master plan. So phase two would extend that walkway uh, completely. So it'd be about a 3,300 foot path, uh, asphalt path. We'd have a revised the, the girls softball field that's closest to the parking lot. We'd put about 600 feet of netting to keep out fly balls from the abutting neighbors. Uh, and we'd move the uh, varsity baseball field about 90 degrees. I, I don't know if you've been out there, but it needs uh, some severe renovation. Uh, we'd also add another multi-use field. One thing, too, is I don't know if you know, this is floodplain. So it's pretty well regulated from state and federal regulations, and it also means the drainage is, is very challenging. We've learned a lot of lessons from phase one that we're going to carry over into phase two. So hopefully a lot of improvements from uh, the drainage challenges we've had. 
I will say, honestly, this is more than we expected this to be, uh, but maybe that's, uh, that's, not to be, uh, that's not very surprising these days. I guess the question is, is it worth it? And, and I'll say why I think it's worth it. One, it finishes the, the master plan, the master strategy that we've all invested in. It doesn't, it, it, uh, I would hate for us to leave an unfinished uh, project out there. And two, I think Hopkins has a long history of athletic and academic excellence. We're a small school, but we perform above our size. As can be noted, uh, the boys were just in a state uh, a regional tournament in soccer today. The girls are in a, a tournament tomorrow. Uh, we uh, won state championship in baseball in, uh, last year, which got an article in the Boston Globe. We're a small school, but we're mighty. Uh, but we all know that kind of excellence takes continued investment. And I would argue that this is a smart investment. As, as Mary said, uh, we'll get matched hopefully over 40% by the state. It finishes work we've already started, and it'll provide a community benefit and a benefit to our kids for decades. This one investment will last for decades. Thank you. Any questions or comments concerning Article 9? Uh, Braden Tudrin, 21 Shamir Road. Uh, I recently graduated <clears throat> in 2021 from Hopkins Academy. And like Paul said, I was on one of those baseball teams. And those fields out there are nostalgic. They're old. But they're nostalgic, but they are old. I'll say that right now. You know, there's a lot of, you get a lot of bad hops. As like he says, it drains very poorly. So I think this is a home run to finish this phase out and just get the new fields. Thank you. Well put. Uh, just a question that I have. Uh, were you speaking on behalf of the students? Because I was approached to have this. Citizen. As a citizen, okay. I was approached by, some, by somebody asking if the students could address this. And is there a representative from the students here? No? Just to add in on that, so a bunch of them are at that varsity soccer game. Um, okay. <laughs> also, you know, we were just conscious of is it appropriate to sort of, from us as a school committee, to ask them to stand up and support this. So we didn't want them to put, okay. to make it seem like there was any pressure. So okay. Braden, as a, as a graduate, uh, offered to step forward. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure nobody was left out. Mary? One more thought um, regarding the, the use of CPA funds for this. Hopkins has quite a few capital plans in mind, um, and the only one that seems to fit with CPA funds is the athletic field. So it, it's, it's not like they're going to come back and come back for things for the building, because that doesn't fit in with the CPA. But the athletic fields is the way that the CPA can help with some of these major plans um, they want to do for Hopkins. Yes. Did you want to speak, Joyce? Joyce Chungle. Green light. I'm ashamed to say that uh, I was on school committee for 15 years. Um, not ashamed, but um, we started the project where the Hopkins Academy trustees had transferred property to us generously, and we were hoping to expand the fields back then. They didn't get done. Well, now I'm in my 19th year on select board, and I'm just thrilled that the fields are getting done. It's a great benefit to the community, and um, thank you, Paul, for doing it for the last few years. It's really appropriate for now for us as a community to enjoy it and for our students to enjoy it also, so thank you. Please. Hi, Mara Breen, 3 Lorana Lane. Um, I've been a youth softball coach in Hadley for 13 years, and for the past five years I've been running the Hadley Amherst Softball League. We're a joint league between Hadley and Amherst, and Shutesbury and Leverett and Pelham. And, um, and I, wanna, I wanna say we use that field eight months out of the year, um, pretty much daily from April to June, and this is our, this is Little League, so this is um, town kids ages five to 12. Uh, our program has, has been growing almost exponentially, we had 60 players last spring. Um, and our, our majors team, our U-12s, we played in the division championship, um, district championship for 
Massachusetts District 2 Little League. So I want to tell you that that field gets a lot, a lot of use, that one right there. Um, and it's, it's dangerous. <laughs> um, so uh, Paul talks about the need to put up a fence. So it is so close to the property line that um, I'm sure it's a real pain to the neighbors behind, but also uh, it's dangerous for the kids who are in the dugout over there. It's dangerous for spectators who sit on the side. Um, moreover, the fence isn't as high as it should be. Um, and the field is also unsafe. This, the picture that you had up before, you can see that there's a lip and that's on the baseball field. So this lip on the back of the pitcher's mound. So that's all, <laughs> all over the whole side of the softball field. So that's dangerous. And so think about our five and six year old players who are learning for the first time on that field. So just to know this isn't just Hopkins kids. These are, these are all of our kids who play on these fields all through. And um, thanks to um, Paul for mentioning how we really have, we're really quite proud of our ball programs here and our teams are really on the rise and so really happy to support them with this. So thanks. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, move to a vote. All those in favor of Article 3, this is a two-thirds majority. Please raise your orange cards. Thank you. You can put those down. All those opposed? One opposed, Jess. The article passes. I got some good news for you. Article 10 and 11 um, were put on the town warrant. There was no need to put them on the town warrant. There is no action the town can take. So um, unless anyone's going to object, we are going to bypass Article 10 and 11. Seeing none, we're bypassing. We're going to go to Article 12, Non-Binding Referendum Climate Change Emergency Declaration. Motion. The town approve Article 12 as printed in the supplemental warrant information. Does everybody have a copy of that? Green copy. A green copy in the packet that you picked up. Thank you for seconding that. All right. Uh, before we, oh, you've got the, the amendment? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what has happened is that we have to post the, the warrant so that everybody can read it so you know what's happening in town. And we've got a certain time period we need to post it so that everyone has a chance to review it at town hall or different public accesses around town. Since we have posted the warrant, the Climate Change Committee has come back with a changed proposal. So the first thing I need is an amendment to, how would, I, how would, how would you word that? Okay, I, so I did that already. Yeah. Okay, but I still need to vote on it. I need a second. Okay, I need a second. All right, what we're doing is we are just going to Okay, all right, so this is on the floor right now, okay. All right, so got that. All right, so for clarification's sake, um, the Article 12 um, has been changed. So Article 12 is going to be read right now. Uh, you can make changes in your notes in there. You can follow along in the green. And with that... Jack Sykowski, 133 Mount Warner Road. Resolution declaring a climate crisis. Jack, into the microphone, please. Yeah. The Hadley Climate Change Committee has approached the Hadley Select Board and town meeting to consider the following climate emergency for adoption. The express intent of this declaration is to make climate change a top priority for planning, policy, and action for the town of Hadley including its select board, town administration, and relevant boards, commissions, and committees. It advocates for the town to align itself to climate-related work with the state emission reduction and preparedness targets, which themselves are in alignment with scientifically founded goals to avert dangerous interference with our climate. The emergency declaration does not make recommendations as to specific policy measures to reach emission reduction or improve Hadley's precautions and preparedness for the expected consequences of climate change. But it urges the town to speedily assess its option, develop a clear climate action plan, and commit to action without any further delay. Motivation. 
Whereas the climate crisis is a matter of grave and urgent public concern, the effects of climate change already damage and endanger Hadley infrastructure, private property, livelihoods, and natural environments. Whereas on April 22, 2016, world leaders from 175 countries ratified the Paris Agreement, an international treaty that recognizes the threat of climate change and the urgent need to address it. They agree to keep global average temperature rise well below two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. And whereas Governor Charles Baker has signed comprehensive climate change legislation in March 2021 that brings the state climate change policy ambitions and achieving zero emissions by 2015 in line with the Paris Agreement. And whereas the climate change is also presents major opportunities to invest clean, healthy energy, transportation, and land use systems that will deliver immediate and sustained benefits to all and reduce further damage from climate change. And whereas Hadley has engaged town government and citizenry for whom this climate change emergency declaration is an expression of active concern and solidarity with other governments to keep Hadley safe and thriving in perpetuity. Whereas the Hadley Climate Change Committee has held the first ever Hadley Climate Day in April 2022, as well as a public forum to elicit input from public on the emergency declaration and is actively working with town officials uh, to inventory heat trapping gas emissions from public buildings and complete the process of obtaining the green communities designation, which opens doors to financial and technical assistance for climate action from the state. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town of Hadley takes this crucial step of declaring climate emergency to alert Hadley residents, businesses, and governments to the need for timely action concerning the current and long-term threat of climate change. Declaring the climate change an emergency acknowledges that it requires immediate action. The town of Hadley agrees that climate change threatens our town state, nation, and humans all over the world, as well as natural systems on which we depend. The town of Hadley agrees to come into alignment with the climate change policies set by the governor and the state legislature. This implies that the town recognizes the moral imperative and unprecedented opportunity to do its part in stabilizing the climate, remedy environmental harms, create clean energy jobs, and improve human lives. The Town of Hadley, represented by the Select Board and Town Government Departments, commits to making climate change a top local priority and to bring townwide carbon emissions to net zero by the year 2050 and to pursue relevant state and federal assistance to develop and implement a climate action plan to achieve the goal. Furthermore, the Town of Hadley recognizes that even if every town and city in Massachusetts, the U.S. and globally do their part in reducing their emissions immediately so as to keep global climate below the Paris Agreement of 2 degrees Celsius warming goal, the impacts of a changed climate will still affect us. So, in addition to reducing emissions, the Town of Hadley Climate Change uh, Climate Action Plan must also include adaptation and resilience actions in preparation for worsening climate impacts. The Town of Hadley recognizes that emission reduction and adaptation actions are an investment in our future that keep our residents safer, that protects trees, forests, natural open spaces, and farmland soils and therefore their ability to draw carbon out of the atmosphere and to store it, and to protect the habitats and corridors for wildlife that are vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. The town will work to ensure that the cost of such climate actions do not unfairly burden our farmers, low-income members of our community, and those who are otherwise disadvantaged or particularly vulnerable. In adopting this climate change declaration, the Town of Hadley wishes to express solidarity with the thousands of other local governments who have recognized this urgent threat from climate change. And finally, the Town of Hadley calls on all Hadley civic groups, businesses, and residents to join the town 
in this climate mobilization effort to help achieve these critical policy goals. Do we have, we, we had a second already. Yeah, we had a second. So open for discussion. Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. I uh, bring many hats to this discussion. As a business owner uh, since 1981, as a business owner in Hadley since 1998, as an environmentalist since 1970, and as the author of four books that make the business case for being green and uh, addressing the various inequities as a profit strategy, and one book for consumers on how to save money, save energy, and save water. And I am strongly in favor of this. Uh, I want to make a little analogy about a half hour ago we passed a whole lot of stuff addressing the problems that we had with deferred maintenance on our vehicles. We also have a similar problem with deferred maintenance on our planet. It's time to rectify that. It's, it's 100 years past when we should have done it, but um, they say the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the second best time is today. So please join me in voting yes. Edwin Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street. Uh, Jack, how is this going to affect me as a farmer? Uh, I don't want to be able, I don't want to be told I have to turn in all my equipment to get green stuff and everything. So could you please, could you please address that please? Jack Sikowski, 133 Mount Warner Road, Hadley. So. Edwin, the first thing we need to do as a climate um, change committee is to develop a climate action plan. What's the goals? That's the next step that this calls for. Okay. This is one of the early steps. My name is uh, Tony Fiden, 5 Cold Spring Lane. I'd like to speak tonight to urge the residents of Hadley to reject this flawed emergency climate change declaration that's being pushed by the Climate Change Committee. Rather than being a benign statement of support for the environment, the emergency declaration, by definition, takes power from the people and places it in the hands of bureaucrats who would determine what type of vehicles we drive, how we heat our homes, and how our farmers and business owners serve the community. Advocates take great pains to claim that the statement is non-binding and aspirational. But in Hadley, our word is our bond. We don't say things just for the sake of saying them. And this is a very real statement. It's a very real plan of action on behalf of all town residents and officials. It commits us to supporting unworkable state and national carbon reduction goals that could lead to immense economic and social collapse. Just to look to Europe, and see the catastrophic results of chasing a renewable energy utopia without a realistic plan. Endless war, rolling blackouts, food shortages, freezing homes, and loss of independence, all without even moving the needle for carbon reduction. That's what's happening in real time in Europe. They're ahead of us on this. At the recent climate change forum at Hadley Senior Center, organizers laughed out loud at the suggestion that our government would eventually seek to, cu to curtail dairy farming or police the crops that we grow in our fields in pursuit of climate protection. They probably laughed in the Netherlands, that's what they call the tiny country that feeds the world, a few years ago. But now farmers there are facing eviction and ruin as the government reduces dairy farms by more than 30%. Again, that's what's happening in real time right now. In fact, as documented by renowned scientists like Michael Schellenberger and others, climate panic itself is fueling the worst energy crisis in the last 50 years. In Hadley, we don't need to panic to address climate issues. We don't need to cede power to government, government bureaucrats as we shamefully did with COVID and the war on terror to solve problems. I urge you to reject this power grab and once again, trust your friends, your neighbors, and the democratic process to confront our challenges. Thanks. Hi, I'm Sophia Sincada. I live at 30 West Street. Pull the mask oh. down. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't have organized just, thoughts. Just state your name and address again, I'm sorry. Oh, Sophia Sincada, 30 West Street. 
I wasn't expecting to speak tonight, so uh, these are not organized thoughts, but um, I am a young person, I'm a farm worker, I am a really concerned person um, about the future um, of not only the town of Hadley, but obviously the planet, um, and I'll urge you to uh, allow this to move forward. I think that what this is trying to do is acknowledge that we have a real crisis on our hands and it will come to affect, um, you know, our existence within this town and beyond. And um, yeah, thanks for hearing me. Peter Matusko, 19 Middle Street. You want us to vote on something that nothing has been said what they want to do. It's like an open book to them to choose whatever they want us or whatever they want to do, uh, especially where it says uh, achieve these critical policy goals. They haven't set any goals to what they want to do. I do heating and air conditioning for a business for 30 years, and there's always going to be your fossil fuels. Are they going to say, like, years ago in the building code, they made the stretch code that they made the houses too tight, and now you have to take fresh air in with the heat that you've used to going outside? Are they going to be planning outside saying you buy a new house, you have to have no fossil fuels in using these mini split heat pumps? The rebates that they want to give you, yes, but is it worth it for the time where if you have something that's going to be fixed, gas or oil, you can fix it in an hour or two? Are they going to say, okay, you have to mandate these mini split heat pumps to putting into a house if there's parts that aren't going to be available? We saw what happened two years ago when parts weren't around, nothing was being built. You're in the low temperatures, we're in the northeast, zero degrees, you don't have parts, you have no heat for two or three days or more, what are you going to do? They're making it, you want us to vote on something that we have no idea what they want us to do. They can make any changes at any time they want, and since we vote on it, yes, they could do whatever they want, and we have nothing to say about it. So there needs to be goals of what do they want to do, what are they proposing on doing? Are they going to say, okay, everybody gets solar? Okay, are you going to spend 50 grand on your own solar system? Do you want to have EV cars? Are you going to spend 50 grand of your own money on your car? Or... Uh, electrical outlets to, to powering up the EV or doing a complete upgrade. You know, they're not saying anything. You just want us to vote on something. We know nothing that you, anything about. So that's the problem with this, where everybody should say no. Give us examples. What do they want to propose? And then let us vote on something, not just leaving it open. And they can choose whenever they want. Then they're going to be making mandates. And then they're going to be doing things that we have no say on because we've already voted yes. So it should be a big no on this one. Dan did Kevitz, 130 Hockenham Road. Uh, I just have two observations. Number one, one of the previous speakers asked, how would this affect his ability to farm? And I noticed this is a non-binding issue, so I'd like to say, what's the point? But also in this non-binding issue, it says here, the town of Hadley recognizes that the main cause of the climate crisis is the burning of fossil fuels. That'll affect everybody here. It'll affect uh, people who are retired and are on a fixed income, and they're going to be looking at paying an unbelievable cost for fuel oil, even though fuel oil is cheaper to manufacture than gasoline. Figure it out. What are they doing to us? Thank you. Jack Sikowski, 133 Mount Warner Road. I think we will all see, and many of us already have seen, that our fuel bills are nearly rising out of control this year. That has nothing to do with the Climate Change Committee. When it comes to what are we going to do in the power grab, um, I don't really see a power grab. I just see this as a natural evolution. We need to start somewhere. This is where we're starting. This is our starting point. We will move forward from here, and if there's other things that we need to discuss, we'll bring them to the different committees. I, oh, hold I just want to finish. My grandparents came from Poland. My brother's farm in town. I help my brother on Mount Warner Road every year. His livelihood, his life depends on farming. 
there is nothing that I would do to hurt him and his farm. You want to, you want to share? <laughs> I, want, I need a ladder. <laughs> Linda LaDuke, Kimberly Lane. Um, as I read this resolution, it's basically asking the citizens of Hadley to start thinking about climate change and thinking about taking some actions. It's not its duty here to specify what kind of actions Hadley people should take. It's asking us to start planning, doing research, trying to figure out how to address climate change in Hadley um, together as a community without hurting you know, people who don't want to have solar tractors and, and people who don't want to have high electric bills. All of that has to be addressed. But this resolution is only trying to get us to come together and say, let's look at climate change in an official way, urge the select board to start doing some actions by bringing people together, do some research on how to fix the dike. Can't just fix it without knowing what's wrong and, and how much money it would cost. And all the experts tell us, including the FEMA people, that the dike is one of their biggest concerns. That's a climate problem because of flooding. Um, we do need to look at these things. This resolution isn't solving any problems except asking us to start looking and thinking as a community together. Thomasville, uh, 38 Newton Lane. In the 1960s, the utility companies had a new idea. Electricity was going to be so inexpensive, they were not going to bother meeting or, metering it. However, nuclear power ended up costing more than other sources of power. It left radio, radioactive depleted uranium that hangs around for thousands of years. The cancer rate is higher around the nuclear power plants and events like the Chernobyl disaster, the Fumashika disaster, and many others. Nuclear power was a lie. Skip forward 50 years, the green energy movement. Renewable energy has made progress. However, there are many negative side effects. 90% of the solar panels are made in China. They have a limited life and they are just about impossible to recycle. Plus, the wa they, plus they waste valuable farmland that should be used for producing food, not electricity. Rare earth elements that are required for storage batteries um, for renewable energy, electric cars and cell phones. The mining of these rare earth elements is, element is environmentally destructive and the batteries, again, are just about impossible to recycle. If solar panels and electric cars are so good, why does the government offer heavy tax incentives to sell them? If electric cars are so practical, why is the government mandating them? There are many environmental negatives with renewable energy. When you ride in an electric car, remember you are sitting inches away from a series of, series of batteries that power the car. A low-level electronic field is being emitted to you as you drive, with some of that being absorbed into your body. The resolution declaring climate change crisis makes reference to the 2016 Paris Agreement. This 2016 Paris Agreement is thousands of pages of rules and regulations for the little people. Why the elites get in their private plane, private jet planes, and fly back to one of their numerous mansions. I urge a vote no on Article 12. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. Um, I'm going to emphasize this is non-binding. It's a way of framing how we approach things. If you were to receive a diagnosis of a heart attack, it would probably frame your actions from that point on. You would maybe choose not to go to the donut fest, but rather the square dancing festival. Um, this is similar to that. We are in a crisis, um, putting our heads in the sand, 
or pretending it doesn't exist doesn't change things. The farmers here know that the weather is very unpredictable now and becoming more so by the minute practically. Um, it's non-binding, but it has us looking for solutions. It's not as if we're going to go to totally electric cars, total renewable energy right away, because we are not in a position to do that. However, moving toward those things is going to build resilience and help us on the local level, as well as help on an international or national level. And um, it will help us on the small scale in emergencies to have more people with more energy sources because as the war in Ukraine is pro um, showing, the energy sources we've come to depend on are perhaps not so dependable after all. The other point I want to make is a lot of people have been saying they, they, they will do this, will do that, will take away your, your rights. Right here, we are we. We are the people who decide a town meeting. Nothing in this resolution can be forced on us without our voting for it at a later time if there's a rule or regulation. So this is not about voting for a whole program at the moment. It's for voting for a lens through which we want to look at our actions from this point on. Alan Zahelski, 138 West Street. <clears throat> I don't know if some of you are reading the same sheets that I'm reading. <laughs> I've heard one speaker after another say, oh, we're not being told we're going to do anything. We're not, we're not forcing anything. Well, I don't know. Wait a minute. Listen to this. Town of Hadley agrees to come into alignment with the climate policy goals set by the governor and state legislature. Okay, that's one. Here's another. The town of Hadley, represented by the select board and town government departments, commits to making climate change a top local priority to bring town-wide carbon emissions to net zero by the year 2050, etc. Okay, I mean, we're, we're getting into, we're going to do this, not, isn't this a nice idea? Let's think about it, all right? Well, you know, I farmed all my life. And let me tell you, I have, there's people I know I have conversations with, and they tell me they don't believe there's climate change. And I tell them I do, all right? I have to pay attention to the weather daily. My life depends on it. My livelihood depends on it. But honestly, we're going to get to zero emissions by 2050. Totally unrealistic. And listen to this, the town will work to ensure that the costs vulnerable to the impacts of climate, wait a minute, the town will, okay, the town will work to ensure that the costs of such climate actions do not unfairly burden our farmers, low income members, etc. I cannot, we just fought over a couple of trucks and stuff, all right? Carbon fuel means your home heating fuel, your lawnmower, your automobile, my tractor. Town meeting going to pay for all of that when the time comes? You know, I heard something, and somebody here, you correct me if I'm wrong. I heard that a similar movement in Northampton mandated now it is illegal to burn a wood stove in your house or your fireplace or any outdoor wood burning, correct? This is how it starts. I think this is not realistic, very idealistic, wishful thinking. Um, I would vote no on this. This is how it starts. We're going to get plenty of laws coming out of Boston, believe me. But I cannot see town meeting buying me an electric tractor, all right? <laughs> oh, and one last thing on climate change. Maybe I shouldn't make this joke, but I will. I do take it seriously, but it's not all bad. Guess what? We've got one month longer to pick the squash in the fall before it freezes than when I was a kid.
I would, moving forward, I would just ask that speakers address up here towards the moderator just for consistency's sake. Uh, she hasn't spoken yet, so. Okay. All right, Susie Moser, um, for Kuzir Ave and Hadley. Um, and I'm also a member of the Climate Committee, and I'm, for the length of my career, 30 years, have been a climate change scientist working particularly on adaptation. How do we prepare for the impacts of climate change? I've worked with uh, IPCC, and I've worked with the National Climate Assessment. I've worked um, for years in California. So just as background for what I'm going to say to you right now. The first one is, um, Someone said, we're going to make anybody. The Hadley Climate Change Committee is made up of six people that are volunteers, that are citizens of, residents of this town. We are you. <laughs> we are among, you know, we have absolutely no power. <laughs> we're coming to you with a non-binding declaration to simply take it seriously, as you so nicely said. Second thing is, there is a history to this declaration. It looked very different about three or four versions ago. And we have basically asked for input from Hadley residents and made adjustments to it, which is why you're seeing the version you're seeing tonight. It is already responding to the comments that we have gotten. And what I've observed is that every time we make a change, basically we get another you know, resistance to it, another rejection. The bottom line is basically the, you know, the message is do not do anything about it. I can tell you two big implications of that. I'm coming back this evening um, from being in DC, listening to a panel of federal agency representative, very high, including Secretary of the Interior, um, Deborah Holland, and they spoke about how much money the federal government is about to give away and would like to give away and can't get out of the barn basically fast enough um, to the communities that are ready to take it. Hadley has no plan and we will miss out. That dike that needs repair, you cannot get the funding because you have not done a plan, right? So we're gonna miss out on the one-time opportunity, once in a generation opportunity to help ourselves be safe in Hadley. I think that is simply what we're trying to motivate that we get going. That's the bottom line. And the second one is, if we don't, it is going to be so much more expensive than that truck that you didn't want. Uh, Michael Doctor, 113 Bay Road. Uh, I'm a good friend of Al's and a neighbor of Al's. And, um, Previous speaker. What's that? Previous speaker. Previous speaker. And I just wanted to address um, the fact that I know you've got an extra month to pick that squash, but last year most of us didn't have any squash because we had such severe rainstorms. And those frequency of those rainstorms is increasing because the, the, the atmosphere is getting warmer. And so we're getting these profound and intense storms. It's Mike, it, Michael, if you could address the comments up this That's way making it very hard for us to farm. Um, so this year we had a drought, so you enjoyed that last month. But um, it's not how it's been in the last 10 years at all. Um, these are real problems that are coming and they're going to affect all of our ability to grow food and we need to deal with this and we need to, and, and we need to, anyway, I'm not going to say it. Dina Friedman, 16 Barstow Lane. I've been sitting here listening to arguments on both sides of this. And what I'm hearing a lot from people who are speaking against this resolution is a lot of fear. And I can understand that. You know, there's fear about being told what to do. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't. My livelihood will be affected. My taxes will be affected. I'll be forced to buy this or electric car, new energy. But I think the fear of what is likely to happen, there was an article just a couple of days ago in the major news media about how we are, our planet is continuing to warm. We are not on track is a fear that we should be much more afraid of than anything that is not going to happen from this resolution that may happen from the governor or may happen if um, people bring a more specific proposal to the table. Right now, as a previous speaker said, all that this resolution is asking is that we come together and discuss it so those people in the room who are fearful of what this might bring, 
have a voice at the table, but that together we say there is a bigger fear out there that we need to address. Thank you. Um, sir. Uh, Brian West, 203 Bay Road. Um, I think the people that have spoken in opposition to this aren't doing it out of fear. Um, there's an idealistic portion to this being carbon zero by 2050. It's never going to happen. Okay? I, I totally support, if we want to have a climate change committee in this town that wants to take up issues so that we can become more carbon neutral and work our way towards zero and bring things back to town meeting as a committee. I'm all for that. I don't need some liberals in Boston telling me how we need to do things in Hadley. And that's what's going to happen. It's going to be driven by federal dollars and state dollars. And so when you go to build a new building in the town of Hadley, the state's going to say, you can't heat that with oil. You need to be carbon zero. So if we want to really affect climate change as a town of Hadley, let's have Jack and his committee do all the research they want. And if they think something works for the town of Hadley, put it on the agenda, bring it here, and we'll talk about it. But I don't, I don't need most certainly anybody in Washington, okay, telling me what we need to do in this town, okay? There's a reason why we have the lowest, one of the lowest tax rates in the state, okay? And for people who have moved here in the last 10 or 15 years, I'll give you a quick clue. It's the planning board that sits here. We've developed a business district in an agricultural rural town. We are the envy. If you go to Boston, they envy us because we have a business district that pumps money into our coffers so that the residential tax rate is low. That was done by the planning board. Now, you might not agree with every decision they've ever made while they've been on that board, but if they didn't do that, things would be drastically different. So I would support our climate committee, and they make up things for Hadley, and they bring it to us. But I don't need to hear from Washington or Boston. Time shall go for it. 16 Barstow Lane. Uh, three things I want to point out. Number one is what this resolution does is it says the people of Hadley are telling Boston, are telling Washington that this is a priority for us. It's the exact opposite of what the previous speaker um, suggested. That's one thing. Another is that we are dealing with carbon fuels that are going like this in their price, going like this in the ease of getting them out of the ground, uh, heating up the climate, doing all sorts of nasty things. When I moved to town, my first tank of fuel oil was 67 cents a gallon, okay? Um, that is not going, that pattern of going from 67 cents to several dollars is not going to change. It's going to get worse because we are talking about a finite resource. We can't just manufacture it out of thin air. It's got to be dug up out of the ground. Um, so by moving toward better options, and I want to talk about some of the specifics of those better options, there's a house I know in Aspen, Colorado, a place that is entire industry is built on it being really cold and that house doesn't have a furnace, grows bananas, was built in 1984, and when I heard the owner of that house talk some years back, his electricity bill was $5 a month because it was designed to be in harmony with the site and to be basically a, a not only net zero but net positive house that produced more energy than it used. Had we done that in 1984 and changed the way we built buildings, we would not be having this conversation right now. Some of the really cool stuff that's out there also, I have a house that was built in 1743 in Hakanam, and that house is heated and gets its hot water 
from cow poop and food waste through a green process that takes methane instead of polluting the air with it and turns it into heat for me and my neighbors and electricity for I think it's 300 something houses uh, on the grid. These are the kinds of technologies we can do. I have seen a demonstration of a frisbee sized hydroelectric plant that doesn't require a dam. You stick it in moving water, it turns. Um, the Empire State Building you've probably heard of. You may or may not know that it was built in 1931 when oil was close to free and was not a concern in the design. They did a what's called deep energy retrofit. And oh my gosh, 33% ROI, three year payback. It was not a cheap project, but they started saving $4 million a year on their energy costs by doing things like doing the windows differently, doing the power systems differently. These are the kinds of technologies we can harness and this resolution will perhaps help energize that conversation if you'll excuse the button. Okay. Yes, Jack. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Paul Pfeiffer, 12 Arrowhead Drive. Uh, I work for one of the largest oil and gas companies in the world. In fact, in the last two years, I've worked for two of the top five oil and gas companies in the world. But I work on the renewable energy side. These companies do have targets to reduce and eliminate carbon emissions <clears throat> at all tiers of their work, <clears throat> excuse me, by differing goals, 2035, 2040, 2050. It is coming, it is happening. They are investing billions to do, for folks like me to build renewable energy because they see that as their business future and they know it's imperative for a low carbon future. I'm agnostic about this uh, amendment. I appreciate the efforts that have gone in. I'm, I'm a scientist by training. I wholeheartedly believe in what others have said, that we see climate change, right? Whether it's the amount of days you can snowmobile, the amount of times I have to use my snowblower on an annual basis, we all know it's changing. If this, this uh, uh, proposal impedes the conversation that my predecessor, Brian West, encouraged, then I think it's detrimental. I'm more interested in that conversation he had because action is needed, as folks have said. But if folks are concerned that change is going to be put upon us, it, it no doubt will be. California just banned the sale of gasoline uh, vehicles after 2035. That's going to happen across much of the rest of the country, right? And so either we are see the change and work together to confront that change and keep it under our control in Hadley, or it's going to happen upon us. I'd rather be in control of our destiny. John. Mr. Moderator, uh, John Silvestro, 157 Rocky Hill Road. I call the question. All right, the motion, a motion put forward to call the question. Is there, this means that we stop a conversation and we go directly to a vote. Is there a second? All in favor, please signify by raising your orange cards. Thank you. Those opposed, please put them down. Or put them, those opposed, please raise them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Calling the question moves. I've got eight people that oppose it. The rest were in favor of moving the question. Moving directly to a vote. This is a majority vote. If it is close, I'm going to elicit help to actually count. All those in, in favor of Article 12, please signify by raising your orange cards. <clears throat> okay, you can put those down. All those opposed to Article 12, please signify by raising your cards. Town Council, worth a vote, or worth a count, I mean? I think it's worth a count also. I'm going to pick someone that has not spoken tonight at all, and he's been a counter before when I was previously up here many lifetimes ago. Uh, Andy, please come up. If you are in favor of Article 12, please signify by raising your orange cards. We're going to start there and then count.
Okay, so uh, Mr. Kopacki and I have each gone through. We have counted the votes. We have verified the votes with each other. Uh, mo votes in favor of the Article 12 were 72. Those opposed were 83. So Article 12 does not pass, it fails. Is there anything that anyone has to come before the town meeting that we have not covered? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to OM. I want to thank Hadley Media. I want to thank the Mother's Club back there for everything. Everybody supporting this, the registrars, everybody up here. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor? Motion's adjourned.